Kiki. I didn't mean for you to get hurt. This is all my fault. Sorry. <laughs> you don't say sorry in this situation, Relia. You say thank you. Oh, thank you, Miki. You're very welcome. You're okay. You're here, Fiddly. Emerson and Anne are the ones who saved you. If they hadn't been around, we wouldn't have been able to do anything for you. <sighs> That's what I heard from the people here. Thank you so very much. Don't thank us. It's our fault in the first place. I have something I need to say. We want Relia to stay in our custody. What? Where'd you get that crazy idea? She's being chased by an organization called Kronos. As for who they are and how they relate to us, ask Fidel. He knows already. How does any of that matter in the least? You've seen firsthand how persistent those reprobates can be. Really is so significant to them that they're willing to go through all of this for her. And now that they've failed multiple times, they'll start taking even more drastic measures. But still... Kronos possesses nearly the same level of technology that we do. As long as they think the ends justify the means, you won't be able to stop them from taking her. We, however, can. Furthermore, your country will no longer be attacked if we have her. I want to stay here. Really, huh? Promise you'll take care of her? With all my heart. Then I leave her in your charge. Let's get you home. We are very grateful to have met the both of you. We owe you a debt of gratitude. Just wait until my technological discoveries surpass even yours. Please see that no harm comes to Relia. We will. You take care down there. All the best. Relia, you take care of yourself. Miki. Grab happiness by the horn. Fidel. Bye-bye, Relia. So long. Toodaloo! Miki. Relia, I'm very sorry, but you're not allowed to be here. Captain, our sensors have detected abnormal energy disturbances. The possibility that they're caused by mechanical activity, as opposed to a natural phenomenon, is 87.32%. What do you make of it? My guess is Kronos cloaking technology. Use impulse engines to change our trajectory. Enable our shields as well. We're going on red alert. Engine output reduced by half. Modifying course. Now raising shields to 80% Omni. We're currently at 30%, sir. Everyone assume battle stations. Tactical display on screen. Enemy starboard. Engines to full power, raise shields to 100%. Starboard side hit. Shields operating at 97%. Loading of enemy torpedoes confirmed. And any info on the torpedoes? Uh, nothing at the moment. Change course to 90 Mark 45. We're going to their port side. Current speed at 0 0.87. We're approximately three minutes from Fay Creed 5. The enemy has launched eight torpedoes our way, all proceeding at course 360. Another eight torpedoes incoming. Following course 50, mark 270. Employing Hadian tactics, I see. 
Looks like someone in Kronos knows his way around a Starfleet battle. Enemy phase cannon fire has been detected. Phase cannon beam impact 135 degrees to starboard. Shields now at 94%. Oh, crap. All right, we're gonna have to let a couple of torpedoes through. I guess all we can do is pray theirs don't pack too much of a punch. Load four photon torpedoes. Set the first to slow, put it on a course for the flagship's eight torpedoes. Set the second one for slow as well and aim it at the second round of torpedoes. Prepped and ready. Great. Fire rounds one and two. Firing rounds one and two. Five seconds until contact. Three, two, one, zero. Ten enemy torpedoes still remain. There shouldn't be anywhere near that many. Huh. Who knew their AI was that good? Five seconds until contact. Three, two, Everyone, one. brace for impact. Damage report. We sustained damage from two torpedoes. Shields reduced to 57%. Warp drive is operational. All that damage from two measly torpedoes? Yakagi evaded all torpedoes. The Nimitz took one hit that reduced its shields to 34%. Its warp drive has sustained heavy damage. Now only its impulse engines remain operable. Even if they're top of the line, our ships are still mainly research vessels. They don't stand a snowball's chance in hell against three battlecruisers. Transmission from their flagship! Before we open communications, shut down our warp drive. Captain, you can't be serious. Do it now. Aye, aye, sir. Initiating emergency warp drive shutdown. Shields at 5%. Okay, now bring them up on screen. This is Captain Aaron of the Kronos Interstellar Army ship Dari Volos. Emerson T. Kenny. Captain of the Federation vessel Charles de Gaulle. Kenny, you say? Well, well, what an honor it is to meet a gentleman as influential as you. A shame I can't see your face with all that egg of defeat smeared on it. Thanks for the concern. I believe you know what we came here for. Which is yours. Captain! But in return, I'd like a favor. What's that? The warp drives of this and another of our ships took a great deal of damage. Enough to render interstellar navigation impossible. I ask you to please let us leave this sector on the one ship with a fully functional warp drive. Run a scan. The warp drives for their first and third ships are indeed down. I'll permit the other ship's crews to go. I regret to inform you, however, that yours will have to stay behind. That's fine with me, but how should we handle the exchange? Your crew will transport over to my ship, starting with you. Then we'll start moving within transport range of your vessel. Fret not, for we shall do the moving. All you need do is lower your shields and wait until we are in range and contact you again. Don't pull anything funny in the meantime. How far away is the enemy from us? We are approximately 0.34 AU away from the Derevolos, sir. That's 10 minutes at quarter speed, or five at half. The crew of the Nimitz is to board the Akagi at once, using any means necessary. Yes, sir. Once everyone's boarded, the Akagi is to warp out as soon as possible and head for remote station five. What of the Charles D. Gold's crew? We'll use escape pods and land on Faycrete five. Send someone later to pick us up. The Daravolos and the rest of its fleet have begun moving toward our vessel at quarter speed, Captain. Ten minutes, forty-seven seconds until they're within range. Open a comm link to the whole ship. Will do, sir. You're on. Attention, all crew members. You will now begin boarding the nearest escape pod and prepare to abandon ship. Do not eject, however, until I give the command. That is all. Captain, you wouldn't be... Took you long enough. You should have realized his intention when he cut power to the warp drive. This is our only option. Will you help? Everyone but Anne and Delacroix board an escape pod. Computer, bring up the self-destruct sequence settings. Access to the self-destruct sequence requires the authorization of at least three Federation officers. In addition... Nix the briefing. Emerson T. Kenny of the Pan-Galactic Federation. Rank, Captain. Authorized. Tiffin Delacroix of the Pan-Galactic Federation, rank Lieutenant Commander. 
Authorized. So let me get this straight. In addition to violating the Underdeveloped Planet Preservation Pact, we're going to add another federal offense to our rap sheets? It's our only choice. <sighs> Anne Patriciani, of the Pan-Galactic Federation. Rank, Lieutenant. Identities confirmed. Access to self-destruct sequence settings granted. I want a 12-minute silent countdown for a warp drive overload sequence. The sequence code is Alpha, Tango, Quebec, Zulu, 4915. Direct the blast this way. Settings applied. Command required to initiate, with another code needed to disarm. Start. Delacroix, get to an escape pod. And get little Miss Starlight and come with me. Yes, yes sir. They're all yours now. May the goddess of victory smile upon us. <laughs>